Business Success Community, I hope you are all having a fantastic Saturday. So, as per usual, as we wait for uh, more people to join us, what I'm going to do is share this live vlog in my Facebook groups. Now, I've got the earphones in so that I can use the microphone. <laughs> However, you're still going to be hearing the dog barking and the neighbors cutting the lawn and all that type of stuff uh, because I'm actually sitting outside at the moment. Normally, the neighbors are good and they, they tell the dog to be quiet in a second or two, so hopefully that will happen. <laughs> So I've shared this one in my master class. Let's share it in the other group. Uh, here we go. If you are joining, please say hello. Let me know that you are here so that I know that I am not all by myself, which is always good. All righty. Um, and then one more after this which will be the last group that I'm sharing it in, which is my marketing group, online marketing program. Fabulous. So, of course, you're busy with the 90-day um, live vlog challenge. And today is live vlog number 29. And the title is, What Does Priorities and Numbers Have to Do With One Another? Hi, Daniel. Thanks for joining. It's always good to know I'm not talking to just to myself. So I'll get to this topic for today first, but um, just to give context for um, everyone that's watching. So yesterday's live vlog was all about dealing with that ever growing to do list once and for all. And um, Daniel says, hi, hi, Daniel. And based on the comments and the likes that that um, vlog has received, I can see that it's a really pertinent and relevant topic for, I would say, the majority of us, okay, having to deal with that to-do list. So if you haven't watched that vlog, please um, go onto Private Practice Success, onto my Gerda Muller page. Um, it's an actual page. It's not a profile. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining. And have a listen to yesterday's um, live vlog, which was live vlog number 28, uh, because there was a lot of tips um, that I shared in there for you. Michelle says hi as well. Hi, Michelle. So um, after I did that vlog, I actually got quite a number of messages from people. And one of the messages, uh, the question was asked um, and, and the practice owner says, well, Gerda, how do I prioritize? So uh, one of the tips and one of the things I discussed in yesterday's vlog was, you know, at, at the start of each day, asking yourself, what is your three main priorities for the day? And then getting those done. So the question was related to that. And the question was, how do I know what those priorities are? And I guess one's gut instinct or your first response is to go, well, what do you think is priorities? And, and what is the one that, that bothers you the most? What's the one that makes you feel the most panicked and anxious because you're not getting to it? And let's get that one done. When in actual fact, um, I wouldn't go with that option. All right. <laughs> if you know me, you know I like to do things a bit outside the box and left field. But, but I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that. First of all, I think very often as practice owners, the stuff that bother us is when other people need things from us. And, and this is that um, cross we bear as helping professionals. It's in our nature to take care of other people. It's in our nature to um, you know, help out. It's in our nature to put other people first, you know, uh, because that's what we do with our clients. It's our job to help. So if you constantly are getting emails, texts, um, phone calls, um, phone messages and stuff, from your reception team, from your clinician team, from um, business networks or other people that's demanding your time, your attention, your input, your knowledge, your experience. As a helping professional, that 
is motivated by helping, whose value is helping, that's the stuff that's going to bother you the most. And, and you're going to probably find yourself wanting to prioritize that because you feel bad and you feel guilty that you're not answering your team members' um, email or you're not answering reception's query, all that type of stuff. So again, I want you to be aware of that because this could be something that is... Um, unconsciously tripping you up that could be unconsciously contributing to your anxiety and your pressure that you are feeling now I um, when I started my PhD um, now two three years ago I've got an amazing um, supervisor and uh, the first time I received an email from her I went what because she had this very awesome tagline in her signature and my first reaction was oh golly is, is that meant for me personally but the more and more we emailed back and forth I just saw that this is just standard part of her email signature it was like a tagline in her email signature I should have actually looked it up beforehand which I did not because I can't remember the exact sentence let's see how quickly I can find something here. Um, yeah, it might not be on this laptop. Let's just quickly see. No, it's not. Um, so she had this awesome tagline. And um, although I can't remember it word for word, the basic message was, Hi Joe, thanks for joining, was that your lack of time management is not an em does not constitute an emergency for me. And I can get it because as a university academic supervisor, she probably gets a lot of students sending her stuff at last minute and going, oh, my deadline tomorrow, my candidature has to be in. I haven't had time to work on it just yet because I've still been at work and kids and all that stuff. So she gets a lot of excuses from people why they send her stuff last minute. And she just has a blanket rule that your lack of time management does not constitute an emergency for me. And I really want you to think about that and really sit with that um, in terms of how that would sit with you if you started to think about all that stuff on your to-do list and about all the emails in your inbox in that way. Because let's be honest, how many of that, that, th those emails that you're getting is probably stuff that the sender can problem solve for themselves. They're just being too lazy because you've got all the information in here, you've got all the experience, it's just easier to ask you. Uh, how many times have you received things late, putting you under pressure? Not okay, not okay. Don't make somebody else's um, you know, lack of time management a headache for you because they're never going to change that. They're going to continue doing it unless you actually show them, hang on, this is not okay. You know, This is your responsibility. It's not my fault that your report's going to be late or that this is going to be late. What are you going to do to fix this up? very very important which is why um, I, I'm not going to go deal with the stuff on your to-do list it bothers you the most because as a helping professional it's going to be you know helping other people out because maybe they're not good in their time management they're not meeting the deadlines all of that type of stuff they need to have a consequence and they they need to know that you can't just jump every time they want something so what then is your priorities as the practice owner the one that really carries all the responsibilities on your shoulders and the answer lies in the numbers and as helping professionals, that's probably the last place that we are going to be looking because numbers don't come naturally to us, okay? Now, if you've attended any of my trainings, you will know that I t um, talk people through the seven secrets of private practice success. And secret four is all about why good clinicians go broke. And believe me, even excellent clinicians can and will go broke. And the answer is because they don't keep their eyes on the numbers. You know, when you look at your to-do list, the numbers is probably one of the last things you look at. So I really want you to challenge yourself and go that I need to look at the numbers. Why? Because it's the one thing that doesn't lie. Numbers ain't um, influenced by your feeling of overwhelmed, your feeling of panic and anxiety, your feeling of pressure. The numbers tell you exactly what's happening in your practice. As an example, if you looked at your booking um, number of appointments booked for next week and there's 89 appointments and you know that you need 100 appointments in your diary next week between Monday to Saturday, if that's how you're operating, to break even, 
you know what you, where your attention has to be come Monday morning. You need to walk in, you need to have a meeting with reception, you need to brainstorm with them what they can do, you need to get your clinicians onto the inactive client list. It, it tells you what your priority is. That's what the numbers tell you. Um, you know, if you're looking at your referral numbers and you go, well, this month I got, you know, 15 referrals less than last month, it's going to tell you what you need to focus on. You know, you need to look back and see what happened two, three months ago. Did we drop the marketing ball? What's been going on? Let's focus on marketing. The numbers will be your guide. Don't let other people's pressure and their priorities be your emergency okay that's their their monkey you know they need to keep that monkey don't let them put that monkey on your uh, your back your bag is full enough of stuff that you are carrying every day so i really want you to ch want to challenge you and you'll have to remind yourself and maybe have a a uh, you know an entry into your diary or somewhere where you go um you know i need to look at the numbers uh, every day what number do i need to look at every day what numbers do i need to look on at a weekly basis and what do i need to look at on a monthly basis because the numbers tell you what your priorities are and that is what priorities and numbers have got to do with one another I hope that all makes sense I'm just going through here seems like everybody's just sitting and listening and taking it all in I know I can get pretty passionate about this type of stuff uh, if you've got any questions and comments, please let me know because I'm happy to answer it whilst I'm here. Of course, I'm also happy to answer it in the recording. Yeah, excellent. Alrighty, so um, if that resonated with you, um, please tag another practice owner in here that you think needs to hear this. Um, please feel free to like and share and comment. I will be coming back here and listening to the comments as well um, and responding to it. Um, yesterday during the live vlog, I, I just randomly announced that I'm going to be running a Get It Done retreat in June. So if you really want to get out of the private practice space and come into a, a, a bubble for three days where all you're going to do is get stuff done with me and I'm thinking maximum maximum 10 um, other practice owners as well as with my team um, um, two of my team members that are going to bring along uh, please message me let me know I actually found an amazing venue um, this morning I drove past I couldn't go in I called them up I'm going out and I'm meeting them on Monday at 1 p.m. so I'm super excited about that um, in terms of choosing venues I, I normally do one of three I either go skyscraper glamour like in the city you know like a penthouse type thing or I go ocean because I love the ocean or I go nature and forest so let's make it interesting and let me know what do you think that I go for for the get it done retreat that is happening on 22 23 and 24 June, I hope I've got those numbers right, but it is a Thursday, not numbers, dates, a Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Let me know what do you think. Are we doing skyscraper glamour? Are we doing ocean or are we doing forest? Uh, Daniel just said definitely listening, just drowning in clinical work as opposed to business work. Cardinal Sin, I know. Yes, Daniel, we need to talk about getting you some more um Team members, Michelle says, nature or forest? Hmm. Ah, maybe it's all the leaves behind me that is making you go nature or forest, but that's a good guess. Guess, but I'm going to wait for a few more guesses before I will reveal what we are doing. Alrighty, we're going to leave it at that, guys. Thank you so much for those of you that joined me live. For the ones that's listening to the recording, be sure to post your comments and let me know what your thoughts are. And remember, as always, all you need to do is say yes to having and building and enjoying your very own private practice. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.